Well, tonight's Get In The Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating for your free estimate. Go to mattsheating.com and get that. Well, I am joined by some illustrious members of the WTLW and WOSN Sports Department. Mark Shine, Scott Nurse, Evan Skilleter. First of all, the guys uh, out calling games tonight. You guys were at that uh, NWC Championship. I would be remiss without starting off with just talk about the game. A close one came all the way down to the wire, Mark. Well, it did exactly that. Uh, Allen East won the first quarter. Columbus Grove won the middle two quarters. Allen East came back, took a lead, and then Columbus Grove scored with 27 seconds left in a tremendous high school football game. Really thought that this one would be, you know, if the, if the game before is a high scoring affair, usually the teams make adjustments and it's a little bit more of a low scoring affair. And it kind of started off as that. It kind of took a while for the offenses to get rolling, it seemed like. Well, I think both teams had 15 play drives at one point. So it was one of those type of games where you had ball control and time off the clock and big plays by seniors on both teams. And big plays indeed. We saw Blake Reynolds have another huge game. Uh, his favorite target, Gabe Clement, he hit multiple times. Uh, Tyler Klum had a big game himself. He hit a number of different receivers. And it really just seemed like, for, for, for those of you who watched it earlier, just one of those games that it seemed like the team that was going to have the ball last was going to win it, and that's pretty much what happened. Allie's had a chance to win at the end, but couldn't pull it off. Yeah, I was all ready to, to call the clum from behind win when, <laughs> when uh, Allen each wrote, you know, went down the fourth quarter and scored, uh, but you're, you're absolutely right. There were four lead changes. It was a great game. I think all of the, the, the quote, uh, headliners that you would have expected to make plays did made huge plays, um, and the defenses were, were, were out of this world um, on both sides of the football. I mean, it was just a great game. It's how you want a championship game to be. It came down to really the last couple plays of the game and a three-point victory. Of course, Evan was at the Kenton OG game tonight, and that one was probably pretty much what anyone expected out of a, a Kenton and Ottawa Glendorf matchup. It was. It was actually very similar to how Mark described his game, right? Uh, Kenton scored, won the first quarter. Uh, Ottawa Glendorf came back. They, they took their first lead in the third quarter, I believe. They didn't look back, but it was back and forth. I mean, it was a classic matchup between two teams that love to throw the football. And, um, I mean, like I said, it went back and forth. Ottawa Glendorf finally getting the lead, fourth quarter. Fantastic fourth quarter from a coaching standpoint. Uh, they kept the ball on the ground. They milked the clock. Uh, they converted some big, big third downs. And the ball control was fantastic. And, and OG ended up on top. That game could have gone either way. Uh, but great execution from the Titans down the stretch. Well, plenty of execution uh, possible for the teams that we're going to be mentioning here as we kind of get into our, our bracket preview. Now, first of all, we're just doing a little segment on the show. It would be impossible to do a full playoff picture just because everyone who wanted to be in the playoffs is in this year. And the result of that is there are a lot of playoff matchups and there are a lot of teams having bye weeks. And just as an example, this no necessarily is the region we're going to focus in on, but if you take a look at Division 7, Region 26, we've got the, the brackets up there for that. It will bring the brackets up for that. And you just kind of look at the matchups. This is probably the most local matchups that we have, most local teams involved. And you see LCC, one of the teams getting a bye. Uh, St. John's, Hard Northern, it, that, that has the potential to be, I think, a pretty compelling matchup. PG, Corey Rawson, uh, you know, kind of moving on there. So Calvert, Spencerville, all getting buys. Macomb, Upper Scioto Valley, Crestview, uh, North Baltimore. Uh, double back to Spencerville here in just a second as we take a look at the bottom part of that. Arlington, Lipsick uh, getting buys, Arcadia, Eden. And you're seeing the, the, the seeding numbers there. Those are accurate. You're seeing Antwerp coming in there at the 23 seed, Waynesfield, Goshen. You know, they had a tough loss tonight, but we'll see what they can kind of do. Uh, Patrick Henry, Van Lu there at the bottom. Perry getting a buy, Hopewell, Loudon. You know, so you're seeing a lot of teams in this area. We'll kind of focus on Division 7 here for just a second. A lot of teams getting uh, by. Spencerville is actually going to have another by if they don't schedule a team next week. And teams have the prerogative for doing that. Uh, what kind of process does that really allow the teams to have when they have multiple by weeks or that they can just schedule an opponent in the middle of the, of the week if they want to. Well, Patrick, I think you've got to be really careful scheduling an opponent. And, and obviously, I think some teams need to work. You know, you're at week six or so. Some teams need to work because they've missed a game here or there or anything like that. But 
If you schedule somebody and somebody on their team shows up positive and your team gets quarantined, you're out of the playoffs. And I think those teams with buys are going to have to be very, very careful deciding whether they need to play or whether they need to set out and get their people healthy and not take a risk of being quarantined. Go, go ahead. Uh, you know, the other part of that is uh, you, you had talked about Spencerville earlier. They had a game canceled because of exactly what Mark was talking about. And then they are, they're in a buy situation. So they're effectively two less games of experience. And there's nothing like game experience, right? So you've got two less games of experience going into the playoffs. I think that can be a huge factor in, in how you perform when you get to that pressure moment of win or go home. Talked to Chris Summers a couple weeks ago when that came up, and he said, and I asked him, so what's Friday night hold for you, Coach? What are you going to do? He said, well, we're probably going to practice. <laughs> so that, that probably made you extremely popular with your kids, <laughs> but that's one way that they could be able to have kind of some type of game experience. And as you said, it's really impossible to simulate game experience. With the way that the playoffs are set up this year, because everyone who wanted in is in, and I say it like that because there were some teams in the area who decided to opt out sure. for, for a variety of reasons. Um, what would it look like, or what is the possibility of a team, say, like a Waynesfield Goshen, I'm just kind of picking them, uh, a Perry, a Spencerville, teams that haven't necessarily made deep runs in the playoffs in the past, but now with the setup, you know, there's an opportunity for, for maybe a mid-range seed, or as we might say, a lower seed, your 12, your 13, to make some noise this year. Yeah, I think there are a lot of teams, especially in my experience broadcasting this year, there are a lot of teams, smaller teams, that do a lot of things really well. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Waynesfield Goshen, actually, because I do think a team like them, ha they have a very good shot of making a deep run. Uh, when I saw Waynesfield, it was only week one, but they looked very sharp. They did the little things very, very well. They ran the ball, they passed the ball, and they were tough on defense. You get those three things working for you in the playoffs, uh, you, you can make a run, uh, like I said. And so, um, you know, especially a team like Waynesfield that goes up, if they win their first game, they go up against another team that had a bye the week before, maybe not quite as, as fresh or they don't have that game experience. Well, sorry, they'll be fresh, of course. But don't have that game experience from the week before, kind of throws off the schedule a bit. You're right. They could definitely make a run, and I'm excited to see some of these uh, smaller teams that we haven't seen in the playoffs for a while have a chance on that big stage. It'll be interesting to see how some of those schools that really make a run. What? What are some schools that we I mean, don't have these small schools or schools that we think, you know, usually don't do anything around the playoffs, but who are we thinking really has an opportunity to, to maybe blow some things open and, and make a real run in the playoffs? I got one. I, I would watch Fort Recovery. Fort Recovery's record right now is certainly not what they expected this year. They've had some tough breaks. They played a lot of teams in the MAC, of course. Their experience is good. They're a senior team. Uh, they've got a senior quarterback. They, this is a year they were counting on. I think they're disappointed right now with what their record is. But when you throw that record out and you get to play in the playoffs, I think Fort Recovery is a team we ought to watch. Scott, who do you well, think? Well, I think some of the usual suspects, right, like Coldwater and Marion Local and some of those that we see year after year. But, um, you know, I've seen Columbus Grove a couple times this year. They've got playmakers. They've got a quarterback. They've got a really good defense. They have a good offensive line and they got a running back that's got power. I think they've got all the components you need. And it, it, as you pointed out with this segment, uh, the, the way it's set up, um, you can get a couple wins and the next thing you know, you're in the regionals, you know? Yep. And Scott, let's add to that. They got a field goal kicker. They do. Who could hit from 50, mm. really. And so you got a guy like that and a weapon like that in a close football game, in a playoff situation. That's just one more thing to add to, the, to what you said, the arsenal. You know, there are so many schools that have the opportunity to be in the playoffs, and we would be remiss. We mentioned some of the local matchups. Obviously, one of the matchups that we'll be looking forward to next week will be Shawnee and Walpock. It's a rematch of a game from a couple weeks ago. Shawnee has kind of hung their hat on having a very strong defense. Uh, Walpock has taken a while to get the offense going, but uh, Walpock with a great 28 nothing win uh, tonight. Shawnee uh, coming up a little short against Elida, but Elida has really turned it on. Uh, Shawnee Walpock, I think, could be one of the, at least in our area, one of the, the premier matchups as we get into the play postseason. Well, I think, Patrick, if, if there's another team out there that's dangerous, I think it's Wapak. You know, they had a lot of guys graduate from a year ago. They've got a veteran coaching staff. They were, had the COVID situation they had to deal with. They had injuries they had to deal with. They've won their last two. They had a couple of close games before that. Yes, Shawnee's an interesting matchup with a Western Buckeye League foe, but I've said it a couple times on the air this year, I think Wapak is another one of those teams that's 
what, the two and four right now, and they're going to be a dangerous out in the tournament. They're definitely on the rise. They for are. Sure. I mean, yep. you can see the level of improvement week to week to week. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to a great postseason run, and we'll have all the highlights for you. We'll have a lot of the games here on WOSN, WTLW, and WNHO as we get into this unique postseason uh, scenario. And I will be glad when 2020 is over so I can stop using the word unique <laughs> quite so much. Mark Schein, Scott Nurse, Evan Skelter. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time.